over 40 and seeing plateaus in strength. Watch this. Our first caller is Chris from Wisconsin. What's up, Chris? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Of course. So I just turned 41. I've uh, been lifting for a while, consistently for probably 10 years. And one of the things that I've noticed really in the last six to eight months is when I run a uh, strength phase, so five by five or right now in MAPS aesthetic in the low rep high weight range, I make pretty good progress for a couple weeks and adding weight to the bar. And then I just get stuck. And the last time I ran a five by five, first two or three weeks, great. And then I just get stuck and can't seem to get anywhere. So I'm just wondering, is this, is this an age thing? Is it uh, something I should be doing different? How can I change my training to, so I don't get plateaued or stuck like that? Yeah, there's, there's a lot to unpack here. So I'm going to mm. start with um, can we ask a couple more? I want to know how long you've been training for. Yeah, you said many years. That's where I was going to go. Uh, how many years have you been consistently working out? Consistently strength training, probably about five or six years or so. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now, are you noticing improvements and plateaus? And then do you maintain those plateaus until you cycle out, go back in and then improve again? Or does it go down and up? It goes down and up. Yeah. So there's a couple things that we need to unpack here. Now, the first thing is that you, you may be only measuring your progress by one metric, which might not be the, the, the only metric you need to look at. Okay. So at some point, you're not going to keep getting stronger, right? So at some point, there's limits to the amount that you're, you're going to be able to lift. Like, look, I'm, I'm, you and I are close in age. I don't look at strength gains like I used to because I'm not going to, I mean, if it was always, you know, if I was always going to progress in strength by now, I'd be, you know, bench pressing a thousand pounds. So strength, although it's a great metric, it's one of my favorite metrics to look at, it's not the only metric. So you can also look at control. You can look at stability, mobility, range of motion, feel, connection, the pump, of course, stamina, mm. uh, endurance. These are all other metrics you might want to measure because you've been working out for so long and because of your age, you might not want to always look at strength. Now, the, the other thing I'd like to comment on is that it's not unusual for someone to progress for a few weeks and then plateau, which is why we phase all of our programs, right? And when we phase our programs in like a phase one, for example, of MAPS Anabolic, we are looking at strength. But by the time we get to phase two and three, I don't care so much about how strong you are, but rather how's the feel, how's the pump, are you noticing better pumps in your workouts? How's are you getting better form? connected? Yeah. How's your technique in your form? So you want to look at all this stuff. And if you look at progress, if we were to chart somebody's progress after, if, if it's the first year, we see relatively linear strength gains, right? I'm, I, I'm assuming your first year of training, you saw relatively consistent strength gains in, in most of your lifts. But when you stretch that out to you know three years, five years, six yeah. years, 10 years- It's increasingly difficult. Yeah. And it's not linear. It looks- it looks more like a step ladder and it comes down a little bit and it goes up a little bit. And then if we start to chart other things like my squat depth, my control, my pain, learning new exercises and stamina, then we see that we tend to trend upwards, but it doesn't look like this wonderful consistent line. You have to kind of look at the, at the big picture. Now, of course, you know, we could, there could be an issue with diet. There could be an issue with sleep. You might be doing too much for your body. Like those are all the obvious things. That because I'm assuming you probably looked at a lot of that considering you've been working out as long as you have. So I, ha I have, you know, uh, I, I, my real first four way in the, four in the strength training was the five by five. And I've been listening to you guys for a long time and, um, I've run aesthetic twice, uh, and got tremendous results just because the hardest thing for me was to do the, hear what you guys talk about so much is do which is what you're not which is yeah getting out of that low rep you know grind mm -hmm. and um so yeah i have been lifting for a while and and i've tempered down the volume i mean three days for me is 23 hard days so um yeah well that brings up another uh, potential point there too is you've you've been not only have you been training you know pretty consistent for so many years but the way you were training consistently for so many years was it sounds like primarily 5 by 5 so we're going to see probably the least amount of gains and progress in in as far as weight and strength in the 5 by 5 but are i mean are you paying attention to your when you're in the 10 to 12 rep range like how is how is that getting better like are you able to do more weight 
uh, when you move into a phase like that because you haven't been doing it as long and are you still progressing in other phases? So the fa the the phase one of MAPS Anabolic is going to be the hardest for you to see the most results from because it's what your body is most used to. So where I would be looking for the, the the greatest gains or change or progression would be when I'm actually doing things that I, I hadn't been doing that consistently, like a new exercise, a new way of training, a different modality, stuff like that, form and technique, depth, range of motion, that type of thing is what I, I'd be kind of focused on right now and trying to progress in those areas. Is there, Chris, is there like a specific um, lift that you you would like to see really go up is it or is it just in general i think in general i my bench has always been the one that i've had the most trouble with um you know and and you know i i'd like i'd like to get to that three four five plate that i think every guy wants to get to i've realized i'm just maybe not going to get there but i just always struggle with my bench uh just cannot just you know adding weight to it is just you know it's really tough, and uh, that's always the one that I'm the we I've been the weakest on. Are you so? It sounds like strength is your favorite thing about training. I, have you looked at our Maps Powerlift program? Mm -hmm. uh, I have not. I've run uh, uh, oh. aesthetic twice. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I love uh, the mobility the program bench. you guys got. Uh, no, I have not. Oh, yeah, let yeah. me send you Maps Powerlift yeah. because that's a you know, strength that's a is interesting. Suggestion. Strength is an interesting metric. Now I like it for most people. But it gets it gets a little weird as you get more advanced. Like I've seen people lose weight and muscle mass and increase the, their their the amount of weight they can lift on specific exercises because their skill and technique got better. Right? Mm -hmm. You see this in powerlifting, especially in the weight classes. I've also seen people gain lots of muscle size with a very small con you know concurrent rise in muscle and strength. So you'll see like uh, you know a, a powerlifter convert to bodybuilding, gain thirty pounds of muscle but they only get like 10 pounds stronger in many of their lifts. And some of the lifts don't go up at all. So mm -hmm. it's very it's very interesting once you get to a particular level. Now, if I'm talking to the average person and I'm talking to, especially if I'm talking to a newbie, like strength is wonderful, let's go after it. But once you get more advanced, it's a very interesting metric and it can change because of technique and form and how, you know, how, how amped your CNS is. And you can also build muscle without getting stronger. Uh, because of It'd other be factors. It'd be interesting if, if technique was the part of this equation that was sort of limiting your, your progress as well. And I think that a lot of people kind of don't really attribute that as maybe a factor of just polishing and refining uh, you know, the, the actual mechanics of the lift and, and really like hyper focusing on it. So that means practicing it a lot, but, you know, really, uh, you know, monitoring your intensity around it. So it's, it's appropriate, uh, for you to progress and adapt. So I think that powerlifting, you know, in my opinion is probably a, a great shift, uh, for you to focus into. I would also, if you were, if you were a client of mine or even or a friend of mine, even Chris, I would, I would try and persuade you, um, I know we just went and talked about powerlift and I would love to see you do it, but I'd also like to try and persuade you to change our goals too a little bit, right? Cause you know, you've been, you've been doing the five by five thing. You've been a very, you know, strength focused metric is what you've been paying attention to. It sounds like you have listened to some of the advice we've given. So you're starting to move out of the phases. I mean, the next progression for me as a, as a coach for you would be like, okay, now I've at least got you dabbling in other phases. Now, actually, let's let's talk about different goals. Like, how about we really work on getting your squat depth or your your technique on on a certain lift, or or how about I teach you a new like I don't know if you've done Turkish get ups or done move like circus press. Let's like let's focus on a a do new conventional lift. Yeah, exactly. Do something different and 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 set some goals so you have something to kind of pursue and watch yourself progress. And I just I, I find that there's um there's a there's definitely a a mental advantage to doing this with yourself. I mean, this is the, to, for me, this is the only thing that's allowed me to be lifting consistently for 20 years is that I'm constantly also changing my goals. And a lot of times it's not necessarily because I really want to. It's that I think it's it's kind of a mental game that I'm playing with myself. It's like, okay, I've been chasing this, you know, I want to I want to look a certain way and get shredded and be the, this, this bodybuilder guy for so long. You know what? What if I completely disrupt that and go, I'm going to be mobility guy and I'm not going to think about weights. I know I'm going to get a little bit weaker. I don't really care. I know I can always get that back. Now I'm just going to see how mobile can I get? How deep can I get my squats? And can I get rid of some of this pain that I was dealing with in my hips? Like, and I shift my goal and it gives, and what's nice is when you shift to a new goal that you've never really focused on like that before that you, you get to experience 
some of those progressions like you got when you were a newbie again because it's kind of a, a new thing. But when you're still chasing the I want to get stronger, I want to get stronger, yeah, you're changing phases, but you're still in that mindset. Sometimes it can get a little discouraging because they just – it just doesn't come on like that yeah. anymore like it used to. You yeah, know? I do think you'll like MAPS Powerlift, though, just just from what I'm hearing about what you enjoy doing. I think you'll like that program. I think you'll see the strength gains that you're looking for. Oh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, congrats on your success. You oh, guys no. are awesome. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you, it. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, keep us posted, man. See you guys. See you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> it is interesting, right? Once you get to a certain level, strength is interesting. Like we were talking to Ben Pollock, who gained like, what, 80 pounds of mass? <laughs> yeah. And his strength was kind of what it was when he was competing at 190 pounds as, yeah. uh, you know, as a power lifter versus now as a bodybuilder, right? But he's gained so much muscle. Um, so it's, it is interesting. And it's when you get stuck on a metric, at some point you're screwed. Like, I don't care what that metric is, well, yeah. you know, muscle size, endurance, stamina, b yeah. build like strength. Well, I think Adam, your advice is sound, but it's again, it's a hard one to yeah. sell. So I, you know, and I think that, uh, obviously like what drew him in is more the strength side and the focus of, of training was really like, you know, where he finds his, his happy place. But I think it would be great and beneficial for him to venture outside of that and really think broader about, you know, how to, how to benefit his body and, and, be motivated by other factors but i th also like yeah power lift it will be that that hyper focus on it uh in in polishing and refining the technique will i think at least you know get him to a place where he's like man i'm stoked about my strength again listen i'd be walking around depressed every day if i attached my 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 training success specifically to strength or my aesthetics since i've i believe i've probably reached close to my peak of both of those I think I've seen some of my strongest days ever yeah. of lifting. I also for sure have seen my best physique that I'll probably ever build. And if I still and if I attached my success in the gym today or my progress in the gym today to those metrics that I care so much about for so many years, I would be fucking depressed all mm -hmm. the time. I'm nowhere near my my squat bench dead PRs. I'm nowhere near my my look that I had on stage. And the, the way that I still enjoy lifting and I still keep coming back is that I constantly am reframing my goals and changing why I'm here. Oh, yeah. My purpose is different. If you that's the that's the downfall of getting so fixated on a single metric that you love or you like it with training well, is eventually you will hit the, the the peak of that. It reminds me of when I had to concede to the fact that I'm not I'm not my identity isn't wrapped up in being an athlete anymore. You know, I have to think about this differently. You know, I have to think about it, about what benefits my body, what makes me feel good, what keeps me pain free. Uh, and so that, that has to be a mental shift that you have to be like honest with yourself and just have that conversation of what else can I focus on that's going to keep me going long term. Maybe I'll come back, revisit some of that. Sure. But right now, like I still need to, to think more holistically yeah, about this. I mean, the, the, the dream is to do this forever, right? Till the day you die to be able to stay mobile and continue to stay active. I don't care how awesome you are. You're not going to be your best when you're, you know, 70, you know, physically or, or yeah. performance wise. So what a tough position to be in if that's what you identify with. Like yeah. You're going to be screwed, man. It's not going to work. If you talk to people who've been doing this for a very, very long time, what they've done is they've fallen in love with the process and the result becomes a side effect and they don't identify anymore with the extreme performance and all that stuff. You have to make that decision. You have to make that change and, and that conversion. Otherwise... Like you said, uh, you'll be totally screwed. Yeah, well, we t we tell people the, the, how healthy and good it is to focus on strength, but the truth is, you know, we're being very, I think, very nice and easy on Chris because if this person was somebody who was identifying or comparing their their look, you know, as as their results, and they're mm -hmm. just not progressing anymore, and they've already achieved this, the, we would harp on them about how. You gotta you gotta get out of that mindset, and honestly, it's no yeah. different with strength. At one point, you have to move out of that mindset, also. Although we think that's probably one of the healthiest places that most people should put their focus on initially, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have its potential drawbacks too. Totally, yeah. you can you can become wrapped up in, in. I mean, and we see this with our friends who were like professional power lifters. Mm -hmm. They were power lifters, and they've been known as like this. Eventually, the body says, "I can't do six hundred pound deadlifts anymore," and you've got to learn to focus on other things. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.